call the City of Madison Board of Education School Board meeting for April 26, 2022 to order. If, if we'll rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, the indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. King, roll call, please. Here. 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 Thank you, Ms. King. Board, if you'll take a moment and review the agenda. I need a motion and a second. So move. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Frere and a second by Mr. Cummings. All those in favor of the agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes. Dr. Nichols, presentations, please. Mr. President, members of the board, I'll ask Mr. Nathan Wilson, uh, principal of Mill Creek, to come forward, and he has a presentation uh, on, on student. Good evening. How's everyone doing? Good. 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 Uh, tonight, I would like to introduce uh, you to one of our fifth grade students at Mill Creek. Stella Lee is an exceptional artist, and she's an amazing piano player as well. She's a very de dedicated and hardworking young lady. She came to Mill Creek toward the end of the 2018-2019 school year as an English learner, and since then she has excelled at learning the English language. I wanted to recognize Stella tonight for two of her most recent accomplishments. Recently, she participated in the 2022 Arbor Day Poster Contest, and out of hundreds of entries from all over the state, her poster design finished second in the state. As a result, she was invited to a ceremony in Montgomery. There she met Governor Kay Ivey and participated in a tree planting ceremony on the Capitol grounds. Stella also participated in the Creative Minds Poster Contest earlier this semester. In this contest, Participants had to design a new spaceship that would go to space, and the participants had to include new technology that they would like to see in the future. They also had to include at least one science experiment they would perform in space. Her entry was chosen as the overall winner. Uh, as a result, she has earned a scholarship to space camp this summer. Excellent. So we are very proud of Stella and all of her accomplishments. This was her, her space entry. Mm -hmm. And then you want to show them your... Yeah. Oh. This is a picking and device. Yeah, for the Arbor. Well, let's see. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stella, if you'd come up here for just a second, we have a certificate to recognize your achievement uh, from the board. And we want to say congratulations. Uh, to you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we're very, very proud of you and, and your accomplishment being recognized. Uh, you know, we're also proud in our community, uh, Stella represents one of the 86 different languages that are spoken in the Madison City Schools. Uh, people from all over this world come and reside in Madison, Alabama. I would say that we are probably the most cosmopolitan uh, school district in this state. And that uh, tribute to her to, to quickly learn a new language, uh, but to also but to be able to communicate that not only in that language, but also in the language of art. And so we appreciate uh, that and we congratulate her and her parents. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask Ms. Renee Bartlett to come forward. Uh, she, along with sponsors from the school, have a, a plethora of, um, of chess winners. And uh, I'm going to let, we have a certificate, Ms. Bartlett, for all of the chess uh, winners. And I'm going to give these to you to hand out, okay, okay. After, after this. Uh, Mr. Peck may want a picture. I don't know how he's going to work out all of these pictures. But uh, I know 
that you and sponsors and um, folks just returned from the all girl national chess championship. I did see that there were several schools from New York in the list of winners, but just one from Alabama. So uh, I know that uh, Mr. Hill was bragging on that this morning uh, on the discovery team. So if you'd take a moment and introduce us to all that are gathered here to recognize them uh, on our chess winners. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nichols Board. We always appreciate being able to feature our students. They have been working so hard this year, getting ready to play over the board chess. As you recall, when I was here last year, we had to do virtual online tournaments and we still swept the state awards. <laughs> well, uh, this year we swept again uh, at the state championship. And so I wanna let all the kids and their parents know that if you can hang around and go outside after I call your name and recognize your age group of students, we will take a group picture and hand out certificates outside. And so, but feel free to take any pictures of your group as I uh, call you up. So I'm gonna start with the state winners. And I'd like to thank Bob Jones High School and Mrs. Lambert for hosting that event. And if you will recall, that was the weekend before spring break. So every family here held off on spring break so their kids could compete, weathered a snowstorm that came down on Saturday morning. And nonetheless, we were able to host kids who came as far as Mobile and uh, Tuscaloosa, uh, Auburn, and of course in the Birmingham area, that was our uh, heaviest competitors. All right, we're gonna begin with the high school winners. And just, I went through history and I'm gonna let you know how long we have consecutively won each section. Uh, and since 2018, a school in Madison has won the high school championship. This year, the most unusual thing happened. Bob Jones and James Clemens went toe to toe and tied in every way imaginable. They tied in the head-to-head -head competition and they each won uh, two games in their match and lost two games uh, when they played head-to-head. -head. Then we, the next tie break has us add up every individual score on the four-person team. They tied that score as well. It was the, mo the closest championship we've ever had in high school history. They ended up with a tie and were declared co-champions. So for me, that was really nice. Um, uh, and, but they were fighting really hard. And so I'm going to introduce the Bob Jones team of Stephen Pan, Victor Lundy, Constance Wong, Caleb Chen, and Kennedy Gore. If they would come up. And I would like to have them joined by the James Clemens team, Sherwood Dong, Will Fox, Shreya Sunil, and Jason Park. And then stay up here because we also have some individual uh, award winners uh, in the high school championship section, which is the highest rated section. Sherwood Dong, who's up here, scored second, tying with two and a half points. And Will Fox was from James Clemens was third. Victor Lundy was fourth. Stephen Pan won the fifth place individual award. Tying for fifth place medals were Jonah Tuttle and Constance Wong. Uh, Jonah, are you here? Is Constance here? Okay. I think she had swim. She's also a swimmer. Okay, so oh, there he is. I thought I saw him walk in. And in the high school under 1300 section, we had two individual winners, Edward Kalinsky and Kennedy Gore. Okay, so we're going to uh, take your pictures outside and hand you your certificates outside if you can just hang tight, okay? All right, y'all can go ahead and go to the back and we're gonna move to the middle school winners. And uh, middle school winners, if any of you are on the national team, you need to stay here because I'm gonna cover the nationals last. Uh, middle school winners, we had uh, the junior high championship team and we have Madison Schools has held that title consecutively since 2015. And this year, the junior high team champions are Discovery Middle School. 
and we had two teams place first and second in that competition. The DMS black team, first place, Xavier Bruni, Audie Saxena, Andrew Yang, and Nirvana Rajbandari. And the DMS white team that placed second, Aaron Chen, Jacob New, Nathan Chu, and Jack Meyer. And individual winners in the individual, there are two days to the state championship. I should have explained that. Saturday was individual day, Sunday was team day. On Saturday, individual winners were the junior high championship winner, first place, who will be our state representative to the national barber tournament of junior high champions is Xavier Bruni. Placing fifth was Danny Seawald. And Eddie Zhao tied for fifth. In the junior high under 1,000 section, Caroline Wong placed third. Nathan Chu fourth. Anna I fifth, and tied for fifth place medals were Isabel Park and James Cairns. Congratulations to all of our middle school winners. Okay, and girls stay here for the national uh, announcement, but everyone else can make their way on back, and we're going to go to the elementary section. Madison City Schools has had an elementary team winner since 2014 consecutively to this year. Yes, that is our longest run. In this section, it was a nail biter. It was really tight. Not as tight as the high school, but oh boy, it was it came down to the very last match on Sunday. Winning first place team was the Rainbow Blue team of Jethro Jones, Noah Sue, Tice Crosswe, and Emma Kwong. <laughs> Come on up front and just stay stay up front because we're gonna call the other teams to join you. Come on up a little closer. <laughs> The elementary section is a K-6 section, so both Discovery and Liberty Middle School fielded sixth grade teams to compete, and the team from Liberty Middle School won second place. Anna I, Lia Gowder, Tim Lee, and Jackson Kimberly. The third place team is from Horizon Elementary, Sophia Jerez, Esteban Jerez, Kylie Zo, and Xander Yim. And I don't know if their coaches are here, but the Horizon team is coached by Sarah May. Uh, Liberty was coached by James Clemens' chess team member, Own Bidet, and Rainbow Blue team is coached by Will Stevenson. If y'all are here, come on up. And their sponsors at Horizon are Ms. Biro, at Liberty's Mr. Palman, and at Rainbow, um, we have both Ms. Adams and Ms. Boyd helping at Rainbow. Okay, stay up here because now we're going to have the individual winners who won individual awards. The elementary championship, that was the highest rated section. Kylie Zoe up here tied for first place. And Sophia Jerez, also from Horizon, won fourth place. In the elementary under 500 section, Margaret Lynn from Madison Elementary won second place. And Ryan Kwanzaa won third place. Will He won fifth place. And Ty 
playing for fifth place were Abigail Barbary and Tegan Eastman. Okay, great job, guys. And you can head on to the back. We're going to go now to the primary school winners. Madison City Schools has won the primary championship team award since 2016 consecutively. The first place team winner was the Rainbow Red team, Elliot Poole, Jimmy McHugh, Annabelle Sue, and Cora Newberry. <laughs> job guys and the second place team is Heritage Elementary Milan Malik Summer Seawald Owen Sukow and Jackson Mays <laughs> and their sponsor is Beth Mattingly and their coach is uh, David Hayes will you also come join Heritage And then the third place team, also from Rainbow, the orange team, Dennis Lenski, Jacob Guang, Lewis Washburn, and Yuita Oda. <laughs> At the state championship, we are also able to combine kids from other schools who can't form a complete four-person team in the club section. So Madison City Chess League had a K-3 club team place second. And those members are Peter Gozier, Joanna He, Lucas He, and John V. Genva. <laughs> Individual prize winners on Saturday in the primary championship section. Some of these are already here and some of them are, are yet to come. First place primary champion, Esteban Jerez. <laughs> Second place, Essanam Teddy. Fourth place is Annabelle Sue, who's already up here. And fifth place is Alice Zoe. The primary under 300 section winners were Tyler Pish, third. Kwong fifth, Lucas He and Joanna He fifth. Now we have a lot of awesome coaches working with our youngest players, but this year um, I get to give a surprise to one of our coaches who the Madison City Chess League would like to name as Coach of the Year, and that is David Hayes, who is here with his heritage team. And what I want you to know about Coach Hayes is he's been with us for years in Madison City Schools. He coached before the pandemic. When the pandemic hit, he went virtual and he combined. He teaches at both Heritage and Mill Creek. And this year, because Heritage and the work of Ms. Mattingly had recruited such a huge team, he went two days uh, a week to come and coach these kids. And he comes at every tournament going over games. And so... <laughs> Coach David, we are so appreciative of what you do for Madison, and I know Mill Creek is just as appreciative of you as uh, Heritage is. So let's give the primary champion a round of applause. Okay, pictures outside. All right, we're going to end with our first trip to all girls nationals. Madison City Schools has never sent a team to all girls nationals. Um, this tournament, we had received a grant from the U.S. Chess Federation and the U.S. Women's Committee to attend all girls nationals three years ago. And the pandemic hit and it canceled. So what we did was we trained online, worked hard all year long, hosted a state chess championship, and then we um, got a bus to take us and got some sponsors to take us to Chicago. The bus canceled their contract on us. We weren't sure we were going to make it. We had to flip and, and get airline tickets, which caused us to all fly in late yesterday. <laughs> 
And, uh, but when we got there, we won our first national championship in a championship section. And Discovery Middle School won the under 16 national championship. That. <laughs> Team members are Nirvana Rajbandari, Caroline Wong, and Christina Yang. Their sponsor is Julie Goldston, who teaches math to all three of these girls. And their coach for the weekend was Sarah May, who coaches Horizon. Is Coach Sarah here? Oh, come up here, Coach Sarah. We want to thank you. Okay, here's a neat fact about Coach Sarah. Nine and 10 years ago, she competed at All Girls Nationals. And this year, she's the first year coaching Horizon Elementary, and she came with us. And we were so fortunate to have an entire female support system for our All Girls team. We looked a little different than a lot of the other teams, and we were so happy to have them. These girls were not the top seeded team. They beat girls rated hundreds of points higher th than them round after round. After each round, they led or tied, and they were the only team outside of New York to win a national championship at this tournament. Yeah. The most decisive round was the fifth. They, they compete for six rounds. They play three-hour games each round. In the fifth round, they were all paired against people rated hundreds of points higher. Christina Yang beat somebody 200 points higher. Caroline beat somebody 600 points higher. Nirvana ended up gaining over 100 ratings points, defeating opponents 400 to 500 points higher, and drawing an opponent 669 points higher than her rating. This team overperformed and battled all weekend to bring home our first national championship. So congratulations, girls. In addition, the Horizon Elementary team placed fifth with only two girls. They take the top three scores, but Sophia Jerez and Samsara Rajbandari, who Coach Sarah coaches, came in fifth place. So imagine how hard that was to beat with only two uh, team members. And finally, Constance Wong from Bob Jones High School was given the top player under 18 rated under 1500. So she was playing in the toughest section and she had the best results of anyone rated under 1500 at the national championship. So board, thank you so much for letting me show off these girls and our national and state winners. Do it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Pictures outside. Picture, picture outside. And do you want me to take Ms. the certificate? Ms. Bartlett, let me say thank you. Um, to you, to all of our parents that were here, to our kids, to our coaches and sponsors at the school. Uh, what a great year our chess teams have had. Uh, toe to toe, would we want to say pawn to pawn? I don't know. I'm not sure what the appropriate uh, would be. Queen to queen, queen I to think. Queen to queen <laughs> might be it. Um, but uh, I was on a trip recently and there was a guy in, in, in the town I was in and for $10 he would play chess with you. And uh, if he won, he took your $10. It's gambling. I understand that. I didn't play. You've, you've seen me play, so you know I'm not going to play. Um, but I, I kept thinking I probably ha we probably got a five-year-old to take down there, and, and he, might, he, he might not want to do that game anymore. But uh, we're just appreciative of all our folks who sponsor that and excited and uh, appreciate your support of them. And, uh, and we just know that our teams are doing an excellent job. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you again, Ms. Barley. It's good different from this Thank side you. of the panel, but good to see you. 
Uh, Mr. President, we have um, Mrs. Ann Van Leeuwen here. Um, <laughs> you do not look like Ann Van Leeuwen. I know her. You are not Ann Van Leeuwen. I'm obviously not Ann. Filling in for Ann Van Leeuwen. How's that? Yes, but and, and the Optimist Club. Yes. I am not the president of the uh, Optimist Club, Ann, but I am a member of the club. My name is Reginald Snell, and uh, I'm here to acknowledge three outstanding students for their accomplishment. Uh, but, but before I do that, we want to uh, also acknowledge the parents for the outstanding job they're doing and continue to do every day with these students. In addition to that, we want to uh, acknowledge the sponsor as well uh, for the work that they do and the uh, outstanding leadership they provide, having these kids, encouraging them to participate in this because I'm sure academics and everything else, it pulls on them. So to do an extracurricular activity is above and beyond. So when I call the student's name, would like for you and your parents to please come forward if you are here. So we're going to start off with uh, the third place winner, uh, Catherine Humphreys. So, so if you face him, please. So one other thing I must say, there were, there were 25 applicants that put in for the Optimist Essay Contest. And the, the writings were all very good. But uh, the committee, the committee which consists of Ann, her husband, Victor, he, he's here uh, taking photos, Doug and myself, we finally whittled it down to the top three. And it was really tough selecting, but they all, all was great. But again, thank you very much. Okay, I was, so stay up there, step if you move to, the, to the, your right there, that would be great. And our second place winner goes to Carter Griswold. Carter. Carter. Yeah. Okay, and then our overall winner uh, goes to Sherry Yu. Thank you so much for coming and sharing that with us tonight. We appreciate the Optimus Club and their support of our students, many other areas of which uh, one of our area clubs is supportive of our students, and we certainly appreciate this. And thank you, and please tell your wife uh, thank you as well. And, and she left you the to-do list to make sure you got the pictures just right. She took the hard part. She's with the grandkids. Okay, okay. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Snell. Appreciate having you with us as well. Um, Mr. President, members of the board, I'll ask Dr. Brian Clayton. I haven't seen Dr. Clayton. Is he in the hall? Where's Dr. Clayton hiding? Oh, Mr. Watts. <laughs> Mr. Watts, you should feel good. Dr. Clayton never gets applause like that. So. And, um, Filling in for Dr. Clayton is Mr. Watts. I feel like we're at the awards here, so. Yes, sir. Well, I will take this time to um, say a few things about the cheerleaders. I, up until probably seven years ago when I first moved up to Madison, um, I was working at Sparkman. <laughs> I had never really been exposed to competition cheer. 
Um, but after being at Spartman for a few years and being at James Clemens, I will say this. There's not a group in the school that works as hard as cheerleading. Um, that's, that's, it's every sport's year long, but cheerleading definitely is a year long sport. They go to their national competition and I think they take about 20 minutes off when they get back and they have, <laughs> and then they have tryouts. Um, and usually about that time, you know, that it sort of comes to an end because you'll see a couple of them walking around in a sling where they've had shoulder surgery. It's got that got a very short amount of time to recuperate and recover before they're right back at it. So just to let you guys know from us, um, I know I don't always come in and give pep talks to everybody, but super proud of you guys. Y'all are very class act. You guys do it the right way. You always represent James Clemens in a great way. And I'm very proud of all of you. And y'all want you just guys to know that and continue to represent the school well. And at this time, I would also like to recognize Coach Stockman. Um, So, but again, a very hardworking group. Coaches are the same. Um, just very proud of you guys and just continue to represent us. And Coach Stockman, I don't know if you may have a few things to say as well. Yes. <laughs> just our uh, accolades from this year so everyone can know the hard work that was put in. Um, Mr. Watts definitely hit the nail on the head board and, and everyone here with, with cheer being not only all year round, but it's something where you have to be constantly dedicated to your craft because if you're not, it's hard to win. So I know that <clears throat> most sports are like that, but we don't take it lightly. We love to to support other teams, and that's that's one of our sole purposes of being cheerleaders. But we also have the intentions of winning as much as we possibly can. So we try our best to do that. So this past season for the 21-22 um, season, we um, were regional champions in both of our routines. Um, yes. Um, at the state qualifying division, we also won uh, in both routines. And we were the state runner-up in our traditional routine. And winning game day, which is what we are here to recognize them for, um, made us three times, as you can see on their shirt, state champions in a row. Um, so that was a huge accomplishment. Um, in that state division, there were 15 teams, and we beat the second place team by over three points, which in, in cheerleading diction, that is a lot. So that was a very good accomplishment for them. And then um, in February, the first weekend in February every year, we have nationals, and um, thankfully, even during COVID, timing was perfect, and we were able to still travel there um, and compete when we brought home a national championship. And this past year, we went back again in February, and we won third place in both our traditional routine and our game day routine. And, um, and we also competed in the world competition and got second place. And all three of those, we were less than a point from first place. So again, so close. And we know that next year we're going to come back and and do do justice to our uh, our runner up and third place wins because we know what it feels like to be that close and and we're going to make it happen. So I'm super proud of not only the cheerleaders but their family members here and not here. Um, it's something that takes a village, and I know I tell the parents that every year, but carpooling to every game because we don't take buses. It takes seven or eight parents to and from every single game, every single competition. And it's, it goes without saying that this takes not just the 30 some odd girls in the program, but it takes about 60 to 70 people for this to actually work every season. So we're very, very thankful for them. But I'm just so proud of all the athletes in front of me, also the ones that aren't here because of other teams that they're on, um, work obligations. But this this is the reason why coaches do what they do is to see, uh, to see their athletes succeed and um, it's really cool because this is this would have been this past year was my third season me and coach Lane and we've taken home a state championship every year with these athletes so it's awesome so very proud of you girls thank you board for recognizing us and um, and thank you so much thank you.
Coach, thank you. And uh, here's a certificate for each of your team members. And uh, we appreciate you and each of them for their hard work. And uh, we know a lot of effort goes in and time. So we certainly appreciate you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Um, Mr. President, members of the board, at this time, Dr. Heather Donaldson will give a presentation update uh, from the instruction department. Thank you, Dr. Nichols and board, for the opportunity to give an update on behalf of the instruction team. This evening, I would like to share updates on our welding program, DODEA, district accreditation, and our summer learning programs that are paid for through the ESSER funds. As you know, uh, Dr. Nichols brought welding back to Madison City Schools this year through a partnership with AIDT. AIDT has provided us with a mobile welding lab that sits on the campus of West Madison. And we have 23 Bob Jones and James Clemens students who have been taking welding during the spring semester. We are very excited to announce that 17 of these seniors have secured full-time employment at Polaris. There are three seniors who are moving on to higher education, and there are three juniors who will continue with our welding program next year. Um, we are very excited to honor these students in our inaugural welding class at a signing on May 4th at 5 p.m. here in the boardroom. And I just have to give a, a big thank you not only to Dr. Nichols, but also Mrs. Sharon Powell, our welding instructors from Global Tech, Mr. Eric Terrell and Mr. John Jones for all of the work that was done this year on getting this welding program up and running so quickly. And also a big thank you to AIDT for um, loaning us that mobile welding lab unit. Um, the next topic, um, DODEA grants. So our grants team recently submitted a $2 million DODEA grant that is focused on expanding STEM in elementary and middle schools. The goal of this grant is to expose students to more STEM-related content and activities at an earlier age. And of course, we don't know anything right now. The award notifications will be released in the fall of 2022. As you know, um, we went through district accreditation in March. Members of a five-person review team from Cognia, which is an international accrediting agency, reviewed our evidence, they read our district narrative, and they interviewed Madison City stakeholders. Um, a big thank you to our district team leads for working so hard to prepare for this review, Dr. David West, Mrs. Lee Shaw, Mrs. Sharon Powell, and Mrs. Mary Oliver. And thank you to everyone who served on a district team and every school administrator who led a team within their schools. But a big thank you to all of our teachers who served on school teams. We had over 200 Madison City employees who had a hand in preparing for this review. And the review included a presentation from Dr. Nichols and other district leaders and interviews with Dr. Nichols, of course, you, the Board of Education, district leaders, parents, community members, school leaders, students, teachers, and other instructional staff. So the Cognia review team had the opportunity to interview 179 Madison City stakeholders during those three days when they did their visit. We recently received the, full, the final accreditation report and learned that the district earned full accreditation status. In the report, the review team identified four, four themes in the areas of culture, data use, curriculum and instruction, and long-range strategic planning. And this slide shows their big picture overall findings for each of these four themes. The review team also shared in their final report that out of the 31 accreditation standards, the district earned the highest level, which is a level four, in 29 of the 31 standards. The district also earned, a, we earned a level three in two of the 31 standards. The two areas that the review team suggested as areas of improvement include having a more formalized structure to ensure that students develop positive relationships with adults and peers in their building 
and expanding the opportunities for teacher collaboration. A final piece of the report is something called the IEQ, the Index of Education Quality. We earned a 378.23 out of 400 possible points on our accreditation review. Cognia does a five-year average of IEQ scores, and that average range is from 278 to 283. So again, just to reiterate, Madison City scored well above that five-year average, earning a 378 out of 400. The review team shared their appreciation for the opportunity to speak with so many stakeholders who were, quote, committed, thoughtful, open, and honest. They shared a list of words that were frequently used by our stakeholders during the interviews, which include family, awesome, excellent, innovative, dynamic, resilient, teamwork, and diversity. The praise from the accreditation review team is a direct reflection of the dedication of every stakeholder within Madison City Schools and the programs and the best practices that are put in place in our classrooms each and every day. This is also a direct reflection of the 200 school and uh, district administrators, the teachers, the reading coaches, IPs, and so many others who helped prepare for this review. A process like this takes a team, and I have to say we definitely have the best in Madison City. <laughs> Awesome. The final topic that I would like to share with all of you is our summer learning programs. We are very excited to continue our summer learning programs that began last year due to the interruptions in traditional school that have occurred since March of 2020 due to COVID. We will continue providing our traditional summer programs, which include EL summer camp for both elementary and secondary the K-3 Summer Literacy Camp that is tied to the Literacy Act, and summer school for our high school students. This summer, we will also continue offering the K-5 Summer Learning Program. For elementary, we will have an in-person reading and math program for fourth and fifth grades that will accompany our existing K-3 Summer Literacy Program that is tied to reading through the Literacy Act. Students are invited to attend this program based on deficits in learning, and we are using data sources to identify the students with gaps in learning. Data sources such as ACAP, iReady Reading and Math, MCLASS, which is better known as Dibbles, um, and the elementary students will be participating in this program four days a week from 8 to 1, June 6th through the 30th. K-3, again, will focus on reading due to the Literacy Act requirements, and 4th and 5th grades will have a combination of reading and math. Our middle school students will also have an in-person summer learning opportunity. The students um, who are performing below grade level have been invited to participate in this program. We are using data sources to identify the students who have the gaps in learning, and those data sources include ACAP, STAR reading and math assessments, and um, test grades from their classes. This in-person program will run from June 6th through the 30th. It'll be four days a week from 8 to noon. <coughs> The high school in-person um, summer option is slightly different from the elementary and the middle school options. Students who have failed classes this school year and they are signing up for summer school classes will be invited to attend a learning lab to get additional support in the English and or the math classes that they are taking over the summer for high school credit. Most of the summer school classes are taken online, so the learning lab will provide additional support in-person support for those students who may be struggling in a specific area. And the high school summer lab will run from June 2nd through the 30th, four days a week from eight to noon. Elementary asynchronous. Um, I talked a little bit about in-person, now let's talk about asynchronous. So we will continue to offer a virtual summer learning opportunity for our students. K-5 will have an asynchronous option for all students. It'll run from June 6th through uh, July 15th. The teachers will post recorded lessons in reading and math three times a week. The lessons will focus on reviewing the critical standards from the grade level, but the students will also be able to challenge themselves by accessing lessons from other grade levels. 
Just like last summer, we will not have any live lessons. Teachers will not grade assignments. However, they will post parent guides so families can help uh, their students check their work for accuracy. And the secondary asynchronous option. All middle and high school students will also have an opportunity for summer asynchronous learning. And this will be for English and math. It'll run June 6th through the 30th. Teachers will post recorded lessons for each grade level three times a week. The lessons will include reteaching critical standards, enrichment activities to challenge students, and they will provide answer keys so the students can check their accuracy. Just like with elementary, teachers will not hold live lessons and they will not grade the assignments. And the <coughs> final summer option that I wanted to share is EL. We will continue offering our EL elementary and secondary camp Woo! that will be <laughs> focused on reading and math skills and also reinforcing those language skills. This camp will run four days a week from June 2nd through the 30th. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. I, I must say, I don't think I have ever had applause in the midst of a presentation. So I'm pretty excited about that tonight. <laughs> you, you and Mr. Watts. You, you and Mr. Watts back there. There you go. I want to say, Dr. Donaldson, I'm completely not surprised and excited and overwhelmed at the same time. Um, the two findings that they said areas for improvement is that just a technicality because when I read through here and I see a formal structure to ensure learners develop positive relationships is it just the fact that we didn't type a formal sheet is that or what are your thoughts on the the feedback on the um, helping helping our students identify or find that um, adult advocate and, and build better relationships with their peers um, the, the feedback that we received is that they um, think we have a very strong program. I think probably one of the areas that maybe caused us to drop down um, from a four to a three is the fact that we allow every school to do what is right for them. Sometimes with Cognia, what they're wanting to see is the district is saying, you must do this. And so we, we got a great deal of praise for all of the programs. Um, and, and for example, it, for those who might be thinking, what are those programs? Like the house system mm -hmm. that is at Mill mm -hmm. Creek. Um, and there's Leader in Me in some of our schools. And uh, Bob Jones does Patriot Path. So there are different each school has been able to craft their program for what's right for their faculty and staff and their students. And so they, they just, my understanding is they want us to make sure that we have that formal structure in place. And so there, there is possibly something we can do before the next round of accreditation. Maybe it is to type up that formal structure where every school gets to do their own program, but they're still held to certain expectations. But the caveat is that Cognia is changing their standards before the next time we go through the review. <laughs> They've changed their standards twice since we went through the last review. So it will be interesting to see next year what those standards are and how these specific standards are adjusted. Now the piece with the teacher collaboration, they definitely want us to see provide more opportunities for collaboration. For example, in elementary, teachers get maybe, maybe 30 minutes a day. Um, and it's not really 30 30 minutes after they take their kids to the to PE or whatever and they run to the restroom then they may have like 15 minutes mm -hmm. and so um, they they would like to see more opportunities for that but they loved the four half days the four half uh, collaborative days that we have had built in the schedule for several years that got um, a great deal of praise I will say that statement you made is the same statement dr. Nichols made at the state of the schools and he mentioned about the time frame that teachers have to use the restroom in between a 30-minute break. It was kind of eye-opening to us and the, the audience there. Um, well, I'm going to say this again. I'm completely outstanding, happy, you know, go Madison as always. And the two uh, things that they found on here are really not that we do anything wrong. It's just that we can just type up something to, to make formalize the process on how we're doing things. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And, and, and provide more opportunities for collaboration. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's yes, just sir. say, you know, when you say that collaboration, like our National Board Certified Teachers 
they always helping each other. Yes. You know, helping the other future teachers get nationally board certified. Um, I just know that that means a lot. And I know all of that stuff may not have been taken into consideration when it comes to collaboration, but I just don't see a, another system working to help each other as much as this system does. But, but Outstanding. You, but, you know, one of the things, and this is, and, and, and I find it funny and ironic how we always try to, it's a 29 out of a 31. <laughs> Is the average is 278, 283, and our score is 378. <laughs> yeah. So we are over, what, a hunt, almost 90-something points over the average. But he, here's the amazing thing. Every time we have gone to the schools as a board or if we bring somebody from the public, I think the biggest thing that we always get from the students is that ability that they feel like they have a relationship with the staff. That's why this is, is one that is surprises me because that's, that's usually what we get. We get, I came from somewhere else, but when I came here, I felt like I belong. Mm -hmm. I finally found a home. I can relate to my teachers, to my staff. And so it's, it's that one is, is kind of eye opening. Uh, but like I said, we, we're focusing on two things out of 29 things that we have done. So, and the most amazing part of this is we just got 29 out of one of the worst scenarios we can ever have. So imagine, say, that you got a 29 out of 31 <laughs> where you have had to change the way that you do business with a what, two months notice of hey, we're going to shut down the schools, we're going to go through COVID, and we were, we're still superstars. So it's, it's, it's so amazing to sit here and see how every year you, you think how we're going to do better, but you, you guys still amazes us mm -hmm. how, how well you do. So thank you. Thank you for everything that, that you all do for our kids. Well, Luis, they gave us a 31 out of 31 that had no reason to come back in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dr. Donaldson, back on the summer program, mm -hmm. do you have a rough breakdown in the high school level between the number of students taking um, course credit versus course recovery? I'm just curious, you know, of our total mix, how many are making up for something? How many are trying to maybe get ahead? Well, we do have a large number who are trying to get ahead, and that's because they we offer driver's education. Mm -hmm. um, and so the number would be skewed as to the number trying to get ahead because yep. everybody wants to do driver's education during the summer and check that box. Um, I, I do not have all of the numbers yet for high school, and the reason is because students can wait until the very last minute. They can wait until the end of the school year to sign up for the summer school classes and credit recovery um, when either, either they're taking it as a credit recovery class or mm -hmm. they're, they're just simply retaking the class to try to earn a passing grade. We won't know those numbers until the very end of the school year because students are giving it everything they've got to push through this next month. And if, if they're maybe in danger of failing, raise those grades to passing. Okay. And on the course credit side, though, it probably skews towards driver's ed. It does. For the most part. It does. Okay. Our, our instructors do a great job, and they certainly get a lot of students in over the summer for driver's education. Thank you. On the summer programs, the asynchronous that's available to all students, uh, how do you get that information out to the, to the students and their families? Um, last year, we did it through Schoology, mm -hmm. and share, we share the course codes with parents and students, so anybody can log in to any grade level. Um, of course, it's geared toward the grade level you just finished, mm -hmm. but if you want to jump ahead, you are absolutely able to jump ahead. And I've had several parents share with me um, over the course of this school year. They were asking, are you doing the virtual option again? We loved it. We did a little bit from this past year's work, but we really loved the opportunity to try to jump ahead, mm -hmm. front load, preview some things um, that's coming for students next school year. So. Um, Schoology and everybody can have access to every grade level. Excellent. Thank you. So One more question. 
Last year, I think we was able to provide lunch for all of the summer programs. Are we able to do that again this year? Lunch was free. Um, that was through the summer feeding program due to COVID. And so that, those federal guidelines have changed. And so lunch, um, unless something changes between now and when the program starts, breakfast and lunch will not be um, free for students. Now, we have had some conversations about trying to identify um, some possible donors to support our students um, who are on free and reduced lunch who might need breakfast or lunch during the school day. Um, but at this time, breakfast and lunch will not be free to all students like it was last year because it's, that's a federal program that has been cut. Um, but we will still provide transportation for any of our students who need transportation to any of these summer programs. Even awesome. the high school summer program, those students will have an opportunity to um, be provided bus transportation if they choose to take advantage of it. Awesome, thank you. You know, if I don't say something, I'm not gonna explode. <laughs> so you know where I'm going. I, I, I always uh, amazes me every time I see this. And, and, I, and I'm so happy, and I'm talking about the EL summer program. Mm -hmm. It's so amazing how we've been able to grow where we were at and how sometimes we have lost some resources, but we have been able to maintain our EL program. I think a lot of people doesn't, when I first got here five years ago, EL wasn't one of my, even though I had a, two students that were EL students, I never understood the complexity and the amount of work that you have to be to be an EL teacher. And when you're saying that you have, and, and, and we all go through this, you go to the state and see how people are struggling with EL programs with one language. We got how many, Dr. Nichols? 86. So one of the things that, that I can tell you is the commitment that our staff and our, our central office have. I believe we have grown by how many, Dr. Dooley? How many positions have we grown in the EL? Wow. That's commitment. That's mm -hmm. but like we always have said, we are the spear. We're the tip of the spear. And it, 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 it's, it's amazing how you guys continue to do the, the things that you do. And it's amazing to see how typically, I think, when we went last time, we went to uh, some of our conference, they were talking about, usually it takes a lot of years to go from starting mm -hmm. to receive the service to getting out, from graduating. And I think the average was, I'm, I'm trying to remember, it was five or six years, maybe I'm in, what is our average in Madison City Schools? So that should tell you. The amazing things on the secondary I know they initially the elementary schools we started with a curriculum that it was bought but eventually we made it our own to be able to continue to provide the service without having to pay I know secondary uh, we had some concerns a couple of years ago if we can even do it it seems like we found a way. How are we currently coming up with our curriculum? Are we still having to buy it, or is it Madison City School created? It's Madison City School's Can so, you say that one more time? We didn't hear you. <laughs> it's Madison City School's Teacher Go curriculum. So you got a curriculum. So you your team has been able to almost double the amount of time that it takes students to graduate out of the EL program. You have been able to, thanks to the superintendent, central office, and the board, to gain enough employees or EL teachers to be able to do. You're able to create your own curriculum. It's amazing. It's amazing. To, to see those type of commitments and see those type of growth when it comes to dedicate. So um, um, 
my kids will be here for five more years, and I'm always going to be looking forward to visit that summer camp. So thank you very much, and thank you, thank you to your staff, and let them know we truly appreciate what they have accomplished. Thank you. And, and Dr. Dooley and Ms. Bohatch and all of the EL teachers took the EL summer program that was just elementary. So when mm -hmm. Dr. Dooley moved into that role, it was only elementary, mm -hmm. and they have expanded it to include secondary. And every year, December-ish time frame, she starts, are we ready? Can we get started? That They start about halfway through the school year preparing for the summer program. So that's a lot of time and dedication that not only Dr. Dooley and Ms. Bohatch, but all of our EL teachers um, and, and the EL um, administrators, program directors who help with the summer program that they put into that. And so a big thank you to all of them for the work that they do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, members of the board, that's all of the presentations. Thank you. And Excellent group of presentations. I appreciate that. Now is the time for uh, public comments. Uh, this is the time when members of the public can come forward and spend uh, three minutes uh, addressing the board and the public. Please remember to keep your comments uh, respectful. And uh, and now uh, look to Miss King for any public comments that have been signed up. We have uh, Board. I appreciate you giving me a moment of your time. I also wanted to thank you for allowing us, and Ms. Donaldson, I had reached out to her, um, about allowing us to review the ELA curriculums that the elementary schools and the middle schools are reviewing. And so I appreciate you allowing the parents an opportunity to review those materials because given the state of our nation at present, it is very concerning what can and is coming into our schools. Um, Governor Ivey, as you know, has outlawed CRT, and I have addressed the issues with CRT. It is in our schools. Um, I've provided you with several um, sources that my own children have had given to them in the classroom. And my third grader uh, came home because a story was read by the counselor that bothered her enough that she felt the need to share it with me. It was a book called Mixed by Ari Chung. And this book um, comes along with several CRT lesson plans. Um, that book, I dealt with the principal of the school, and it was kindly suggested that that book be removed altogether from the school. Um, another book was just um, given to my information that at a book fair in one of our schools, My Mom's Love Me by Anna Membrino, also Dr. or Governor Ivey has outlawed uh, through HB 322 banning discussions of sexual orientation. That book was put on display in one of our schools for a book fair in our elementary. Um, topics of sexuality and information regarding such matters has no place in our schools, period. That is the job of the family, the job of the parents. Nothing beyond reproduction on a basic level, should even be mentioned in our upper grades. Um, another thing, I'm sorry, I, I didn't write a speech, so I'm just kind of trying to bring these all to your attention. I really would like to see something put in place. There needs to be a banned book list when these things come to your attention. That mixed book in particular was not meant to be used with malicious intent but another student or teacher with an agenda could definitely use it as such. Books that have been brought to the attention of administration, there needs to be a banned book list for the district. If parents are filing books in the library and they come across books in the library, that needs to be brought to the attention to the administrators and there needs to be a banned book list. There, I would love to see a parent group to be able to be a part of these discussions, especially with our new curriculums. Those curriculums that our schools are reviewing are full of SEL. You may love the idea of SEL, but SEL is nothing but an avenue for ushering in these topics of CRT and gender identity and all of the things that we need to keep out of the schools. Thank you. The next person is Ms. Patricia Batch.
Good evening, board. Um, as the Madison City Council of PTA's president, I'm just here just to give a reminder that next week is Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, so I think we had a number of presentations um, that really um, uh, underscore and are a testament to um, all of the work that our teachers do uh, in the school system. And all of our PTAs are celebrating our teachers in some way and would appreciate uh, the support of obviously the students and the parents in any way that students and parents are, are able to help celebrate, uh, of course, by any type of donation, um, but time uh, as well. Volunteering um, is critically important. So if any parents um, uh, uh, have any interest in doing that, please reach out to your PTAs um, and find out how you're able to um, support Teacher Appreciation Week next week. Um, I'd also just like to give a quick plug for, it's actually a district level um, program and it's called Honor Your Educator. Um, and that's a way for people um, uh, students, parents, uh, members of the community to actually donate directly to teachers so that they can purchase items for their classrooms. So that money is, is distributed from the district level down to uh, the individual school levels and then this, the, the teachers can go and, and buy whatever whatever they might need for their classroom. So as much as they might love your you know best teacher mug, um, they probably might like uh, to buy some packs of crayons or, or pencils so they don't have to pay for those items out of their pocket. Um, so. That's about it. Teacher appreciation next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is the end of public comments. We will move into action items. Dr. Nichols. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, I recommend for approval the consent agenda items that consist of A, minutes 22-01, April the 7th, 2022. B, an agreement by and between Madison City Board Panorama Education. Uh, for social emotional platform. This will be used with our EL students. It surveys in eight languages, uh, be part of our summer EL camp program that allows us to look at how our kids are adapting in, in new environments. And C, James Clemens High School football consent release for participation in transportation uh, for a leadership trip that they have, Outdoor Adventures of Tennessee. Board, the superintendent recommends approval of the consent agenda items that you have before you. And these all be taken as a group. Yes. The group, fine. Can I have a motion and a second? So move. Second. A motion by Mr. Ferrer and a second by Mr. Cummings. All those in favor of the consent agenda items, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes. Dr. Nichols. Mr. President, members of the board, I recommend for approval and agreement by and between TES Software, Inc. and the City Board of Madison. Uh, education for TES Core Time Clock. Uh, this is a time clock program. Uh, we uh, be upgraded. It has cloud storage and security for one year. Includes uh, the upgrading for and functionality to streamline all our employees and also a substitute module uh, that allows for automatic calling of substitutes. Board, the superintendent recommends approval of an agreement by and between TES Software and the City of Madison Board of Education. Can I have a motion and a second? So move. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Frere and a second by Mr. Cummings. Discussion? Mr. President, members of the board, uh, this upgrade allows a more fluid movement of, of time clock for our uh, support staff, our teachers, uh, substitutes. It also will allow our permanent subs uh, a, an ease of responsibility and the fact that the teachers can use the module to um, automatically find subs or we can use it as a district to put out uh, calls to groups of subs. Uh, sometimes that's a challenge. You know, a couple of weeks ago we had a challenge where we had a lot of professional development going all, all in one day. Um, when you count that in along with uh, personal leaves and professional leaves or sick leaves, uh, then it can make a challenge on trying to find. This should really help um, our system to be able to reach out and communicate in a much faster fashion to find those substitutes. <coughs> any questions? Further discussion? Does this achieve any kind of cost savings, or is it a more expensive system, but it gets a more um, a broader reach, especially in, in getting subs and getting the word out on those and be able to locate those in a timely manner? I think it, it's. It's not overly expensive. It's about $30,000, I think, is, is the cost. Um, 
So it, I think it's a savings of time, uh, especially in getting someone to be able to respond and get in the classroom when we have a situation where f teachers are out. So um, I think the cost is, is pretty low for what we can get in response and really help um, our permanent subs at each school respond quicker to those times when we need them. It gets to be a challenge. You know, everybody kind of uh, gets connected to their school that they like, and uh, you get a comfortable list. And that's all great until the big day hits, and all of a sudden you've got you've got uh, ball teams traveling, and you've got an entire department out for a math training or or something that's going on like that. And now all of a sudden that 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 regular group of ten that you always can call, uh, you need twenty five. And so this will, uh, I think, help us in those situations and be well worth the cost of that. Dr. Nichols, the t are the teachers responsible for finding a sub if they at the last minute want to be out, or is it the principal's responsibility? Well, the permanent subs have really uh, kind of morphed into this. They really weren't kind of to do that. They were more to be there in case we had an emergency and needed a permanent sub, but they've kind of morphed into this calling system. And so this ought to let the teacher have more interaction uh, when they need somebody in a quicker response and thereby free up the permanent sub uh, to respond to those emergencies like we had them for. Uh, and also, you know, we going back to conversation, uh, looking at time, you know, we talk about the elementary teachers. Um, those permanent subs help us when we have RTI, when we have to pull teachers out and, and they cover classes and those types of things. Uh, sometimes they haven't been able to do that. We've had to get an extra sub uh, because they're calling and trying to find people. So this should help uh, to pick up the speed of that system. So this is actually a benefit to the teachers and administrators? Yes. Okay. We hope it will be. We're going to give it a try for a year and see. Awesome. Anything else? <clears throat> I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes. Dr. Nichols. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, I just present to you policies for our first reading. These are the dual enrollment course 4.14, uh, new policy on cameras and self-contained classrooms 4.10, a revision to uh, the uh, service animal notice uh, in the code of conduct 4.13, and then the public health and um, prevention and disease mitigations, and then finally the student dress code, which is part of the code of student conduct. And we present those, we'll put those on our website and out to professional organizations for feedback, and then we'll bring those back to you uh, in the coming board meetings uh, for your review and approval. Board, the superintendent has provided the uh, first reading of the policies listed before you. Uh, we have members of the, we have uh, one member of the policy committee here tonight, uh, Mr. Frere. Uh, uh, would you or anyone else want to discuss any of these or, uh, or, or we can wait until, uh, until they've been out and, and uh, been in the, uh, in the, uh, on the website, but. I think uh, I just want to address one specific in, not the policy itself. I want to get the public input. I just want to thank the superintendent and Dr. Jaw, because I think um, a couple of uh, months ago, we, we, we had parents come in and ask us to revive this. And you said that you were going to do it, and you said you were going to do it in a way that you will receive feedback from everybody. And you were going to make sure that it was going to be fair and it's going to be unbiased opinion, and you did. And I'd like to thank you all for putting the time to do this. And, uh, and just in another note is, I think our policy committee wasn't, uh, didn't sign up for, or they didn't thought, because I think this, is, this was the busiest policy committee in regards to policies and impact of the policies that we have had in a long time. So we went through a lot of important and uh, impactful policies in, uh, like I said, yes, we, we're there on the board as board member, and, and we know what we need to know when we get there. But the reason why this time was so easy, it was the dedication of our departments or central office or HR department to make this so easy 
for everybody to understand how many uh, members do we have in the committee? 14 members. So you had to provide enough information to be able to do this on an hour and a half with 14 different members and be able to come up with enough materials where everybody understood, staying on time and vote on this. So it, it, it took, it's, I don't know if I'm making, I, I'm, I'm giving credit or I can articulate enough to, for people to understand the effort that you have to do to go through all these policies and be able to get it through with minimal questions and everybody understand and agree on a policy. So thank you. Uh, thank you for your legal department and thank you, Superintendent, for keeping your your promise to do this and do it this year. That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Ferrer. Anyone else? The cameras is not to watch the teachers. It's actually going to offer protection for our staff as well. Yes. Um, you know, we're looking at that policy and Mr. Sanderson has worked with us on that. Um, you know, we have those situations where we have students that are nonverbal and uh, in collaboration with Mr. Sanderson, um, parents, special ed committee, Dr. Zinkel, uh, we're looking at that. Before we would put those in, we want to have a policy in place. Uh, it's not like a nanny cam policy, so it's not a running policy. Um, there would be stipulations about that, that information, how it would be viewed. Uh, so that's one reason we're taking time to look at that, uh, talking to districts that have a policy in place like that. Um, so that's, that's where we are with that policy right now to take a look at it and, and kind of get feedback on it and get it in a position that we feel comfortable with. Thank you. <clears throat> I know we have a policy regarding service animals. Um, do, do we have a sizable number of service animals um, in our schools at present? Is this a, an issue we think that might be growing, you know? It, uh, as far as the number of animals in place? We've had occasions where we've had service animals. Uh, we, you know, you have to be careful about the difference between the terminology of support mm -hmm. animals and service animals. Right. Uh, so, you know, there, there are some requests, and, and we're looking at the potential of possibly having um, a support animal. Uh, it's different than a service animal. And uh, we wanted to make sure that our policy that we had would meet those expectations if, if that opportunity came. We've been approached for an opportunity. There are school districts all over the state uh, that utilize uh, support animals, and so we've been in discussion with them for probably over a year and a half, Dr. Ja. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we haven't jumped into it very quickly. I mean, kind of slowly uh, looked into it, but uh, we're, we are looking into that uh, as an exploration to see for the district. Do we have any miniature horses in place now? No, no sir. Not, the, not yet. <laughs> With nothing further, we'll move to uh, personnel actions. <clears throat> uh, Mr. President, members of the board, I recommend for approval the supplemental contracts uh, for work performed for Madison City Schools. Or the superintendent recommends approval of the supplemental contracts that you have before you. Can these be taken as a group? Yes. The group fine. Can I have a motion and a second? So move. Second. A motion by Mr. Freer and a second by Mr. Holsey. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, most of these contracts will be um, useful for our summer tutoring programs, our summer work uh, in our camps in, in, in elementary and middle and high school, and also uh, summer supplemental contracts for uh, some of our athletic programs and then a couple in there for uh, cafeteria or gym rental uh, that, that are standard for the district. I already, yes, I already have the motion in a second. <laughs> I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes. Dr. Nichols. Mr. President, members of the board, I recommend for approval a list of substitutes uh, for the Madison City Schools. Board, the superintendent recommends approval of the list of substitutes for Madison City Schools. This will be added to the existing list. Can these be taken as a group? <laughs> the group fine. Can I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. A motion by Mr. Cummings and a second 
Uh, Mr. Ferrer, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes. Dr. Nichols. Mr. President, members of the board, I recommend for approval the personnel actions that are presented before you for leaves, um, resignations, employments, and other areas. Board, the superintendent recommends the personnel actions that you have listed before you. Can these be taken as a group? May I have a motion and a second? So move. Second. A motion by Mr. Cummings and a second by Mr. Holsey. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Personnel actions pass. Dr. Nichols, are there any you need to call attention to tonight? No, sir. All right. We will move then, uh, we will move into superintendent comments. Uh, first of all, let me recognize Officer Scott that's with us tonight, Sam, and then a new SRO, uh, Mitchell Steese, is with us tonight. He's a 2014 graduate of Bob Jones High School oh. <laughs> and has joined, uh, we go, we've got him assigned to JC, so, you know, um, <laughs> he's, he's going to have to learn that Carolina blue over there. I don't know. We'll see how it works out for him, but uh, we've had a couple of, of spots open in our SROs, and Chief Gandy's worked with us, and we're excited to have you uh, with us, Mitchell, and Sam uh, does always keeps everybody straight at Discovery, and we don't ever have to worry about. Uh, he, he keeps keeps it, the co place cool and smooth all the time. But we appreciate <laughs> you, uh, folks, for what you do not only inside our schools but across our community and those that uh, are part of your uh, first responder family. And we appreciate you for that. Um, Lots of, lots going on. It's hard to believe that I think May the 16th is graduation. Be coming up quickly at the Von Braun Center. And uh, she will not, she will congratulate everybody else and thank everybody else. So I will start with uh, Dr. Donaldson, who um, headed the um, accreditation review team and kept everybody in check. <laughs> And also the dress code. So it wasn't really in her fort, and I'm not sure she wanted it, but somehow she and Dr. Jaw somehow got it. And, uh, uh, you know, and uh, among other uh, things that, uh, that, that she does, and Dr. Jaw and her team, we had a great career fair uh, the other night. Many, many folks came, and so, uh, you know, I just appreciate uh, all of their staff in there, and um, it takes everybody working together. Uh, everybody pulls together, uh, so I'm just appreciative of them and what they do. And um, we had a great turnout. It's it, it's easy to it's easy to uh, recruit folks in a way. Uh, if you want to come to a place where you have um, great parent support and you have colleagues that will work with you and you have kids that want to attain and achieve at a high level uh, and you have a community that supports, um, you know. That's what I tell folks. Where else would you want to teach? Mm -hmm. And so uh, we had a great night. And, of course, Dr. Jaw takes many of our administrative team out and visits universities and colleges. And uh, she, she's on the caravan trail out there talking to folks. And uh, so uh, we, we appreciate uh, th that team in the HR department for all they do. And, Dr. Donaldson, thank you uh, for all that work. Uh, our eSports teams, I've, I got an email that five of eight of them are in the playoffs in the state. Uh, they've made it to the top eight in Alabama and top 16 regionally. Uh, I think they have a state tournament coming up in Birmingham, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, we also um, had today that both Bob Jones and James Clemens were recognized by U.S. News World and Report uh, to be in the top 10 high schools in the state. Bob Jones was sixth. James Clemens was seventh. Uh, they were separated by 95.61 and 95.07 out of 100. So um, we, we get those small numbers there, Mr. Frere. Um, but I think one of the things that I'm proud of is if you look down that list, uh, the first two schools are really magnet schools. Mm -hmm. And then you look at schools three, four, and five, and you look at the local spending. Mm -hmm. One of those schools alone, I think I'm correct, spent $10,000 per student of local money above what they were given by the state. I think our total was $1,139. You know, we're, we're not that metropolitan area that has that high tax sales tax where that money, and, a, and some of those districts have a penny sales tax dedicated to their schools. We do a lot 
and provide more than I than 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 most people, and we do it very conservatively financially, and um, and we get our bang for our buck. And I'm going to tell you that's because of the hard work that happens. But again, we have great students, we have great parents, we have great teachers and administrators, a great central office staff. Everybody works together uh, so that we could have two schools um, ranked in the top 4% of all high schools in, in the country. And at that time, same time, we had Obteen, Poor, Bazaar, of, of Bob Jones, and Yao Li of James Clemens, who were two of the 14 students named as U.S. Presidential Scholar semifinalist in Alabama. Wow. So of all of those high schools in Alabama, over 400, there were 14 Presidential Scholar nominees, and two of those 14 sit right here in our high schools. And I think I'm just very proud of our folks for what they do. Um, and I'm proud, I want to say thank you again to Ms. Powell. And Mr. Jones is back there somewhere hiding. He will, <laughs> he'll hide out there in the hall. Um, <laughs> I'm as proud of anything of our 21 welding students and that 17 of them are going to sign and get a job and go to work and make a good salary and continue that. And um, I always, Ms. Powell has worked extremely hard to coordinate mm -hmm. AIDT. And Mr. Jones back there has stayed on top of the utilities people <laughs> to make sure we could get the power. Uh, but I'll also say um, that our teacher uh, that came with us, we, were, we had a little, little lag time in getting the power on like we wanted to. And he found a portable welding machine and brought it from global tech indicator so he could go ahead and get his kids started. Now, if you want a fun day, any morning, go by West Madison and go visit the welding program. Just, but knock on the door before you go in <laughs> because the sparks are flying and you'll get, you know, you burn a good suit there, Mr. Cummins, if you go in. Um, but I asked those kids the other day, what would you have taken if you hadn't had this class? P.E. Nothing against PE, by the way. But they weren't going to be PE teachers. And that class gave them that opportunity. We have 50 plus for next year. We're trying to figure out how to go ahead and get them started this summer. I'm as proud of that. But I'm also proud of the fact that 99 students at JC and 95 students at Bob Jones have scored a 30 or above on the ACT wow. in the senior class. That's somewhere between 20 and 25%. So when you go to graduation, almost one out of every four kids that walk across that stage has a 30 to a 36. Now, I don't know about all y'all if you want to share your <laughs> ACT score. Okay, I'd be glad to look at it. Um, and, you know, but I'm as... I, those are two different pathways for kids a lot of times. And I just am proud of our district that we've looked for that, uh, for those pathways. I appreciate PJ was here, and I appreciate our, our we had a great uh, awards day. Our, our district uh, PTA was recognized, but we also, JC was recognized for their family school program, Midtown for their family school program, Madison got a reading scholarship, and we had 11 students that were recognized in Reflections at the state level, 15, I was wrong, okay? <laughs> I love it. I'll fix that. And um, 10 out of 11 of our schools got the golden apple for 100% membership in the PTA. And next year, we will have 11 out of 11. The superintendent going to have to talk with somebody. Um, so we see what we can do. But, you know, just the work that happens across the district of everybody and what they do um, very proud of the hard work that goes in. And if any night from now to the end of school, if you drive by school and there are more than three cars in the parking lot, stop. There's a drama. There's a band. Mm -hmm. There's an awards. There's a scholars banquet. There's something going on uh, every night of every week, like tonight. As soon as we leave here, we've got James Clemens, Clemens Choir Concert and uh, ball games and things. So um, I'm just very proud of our folks and the hard work that they put in. Um, to make make our district as successful as it is. Thank you, Dr. Nichols. Mr. Holsey, we'll start with you tonight. Board comments. Um, I just want to say congratulations again to all of our students who were recognized tonight. Um, we recognize state and national champions 
um, across a variety of, of areas in, in athletics, in the arts, uh, in chess. Um, I don't know if there is a state championship for welding, but if there is, we'll probably be winning it in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that just shows, again, the opportunities we provide to all of our students, no matter where they are, what they're striving to achieve. Uh, we want them to succeed whatever they're doing. And that goes back to our staff, our administration. Everyone does a great job of providing those opportunities and creating opportunities. You know, we created we created welding. And look what it's going to lead to the lives of these students who are, are going down that path. So it's just, a, you know, great achievements. So congratulations to all of them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holsey. Mr. Frere? You know, just to touch on what you just said, I remember, when was it? I think it was the first year, the second year we were discussing how we do so well with our students when it comes to the percentage of people that go to, or students that go to college. But we don't want to stop there. We want to make sure that we made all students successful. And I think we have always tried to find a way. Not everybody is college bound when they graduate. I wasn't college bound when I graduated. I chose to go to the Army. I got out of the Army, and I chose to go do a technical certificate in how to repair computers. Eight years later, I had a master's in accounting. So not everybody is, there's some Lewis or late bloomers that sometimes need another opportunity or they need, they need other type of, of emphasis where they can feel comfortable and be productive. Because the, the biggest thing you can give a, a human being is the ability to feel that they fulfill a role and they're useful and they're part of a economy group. And I think this is such a wonderful thing where we're giving those students the opportunity to succeed because sometimes all you need is just that thing. Just give me the opportunity to succeed because maybe I'm, I'm not the greatest at taking a test. I'm not the greatest at spelling, but I might be the greatest welder in the world. And, I, and they will be making a lot of money. <laughs> and, and it's always nice to see that you can always create opportunities for everybody so it's, it's it's really it's really amazing when you start seeing some of the things and I think that was one of the things that I asked when you were interviewing what is it that you're going to do for all students right because I think we 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 always toot our horn about how many how many students we did this we did that in but we have never before being able to say how many, how great students have done on trade skills. And I think we're changing the narrative. And thank you for you and your staff for creating that for us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Freer. Mr. Kevin. You know, it's one of those nights where it's a lot of things going on. You don't know where to begin. So I'm going to ramble here for a few minutes. I just want to say an outstanding job. We got a chance to see Stella leave with Mill Creek and said that she met the governor. In the elementary school level, can you imagine meeting the mm-hmm. governor of the state of Alabama as an elementary student? Um, seeing our chess students come up here from... <laughs> three feet tall to <laughs> high schoolers and such a diverse group of kids. It was just outstanding. And so look at the level, at the opportunity that we've given our students to where you competing like this at an elementary school level. And then not only are you competing, you're traveling. So, you know, it's a big deal for me as a student when you go on a field trip. Um, but they actually left the city, you know, on a field trip and then competed at the highest level. And then basically went in as underdogs based off the points that Ms. Bartley talked about and then came out victorious. It's nothing like winning when you're not expected to win. And just seeing all these opportunities. Our cheerleaders with our back to back to back, you know, championships. I was like, that's a big deal. You know, I tell you what, if they get another back to back, I want one of those white jackets that you got last year. (laughs) I mean, just... 
and the, the welding program. And again, my son had an opportunity to be in the welding program. And, you know, while they was working, scrambling, trying to get utilities to get this massive power hooked up to this station, my son was saying, hey, the, the, our teacher, he said he's going to bring us welding kit, kit from home. I mean, so here we go. We got an outside teacher with an outside portable station, but he come with that same Madison City education passion to where, man, I'm going to bring a welder from house from the house to make sure you guys get it. So here they are. They got a late start in this, and they've already got jobs already. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen for that 11th grader that's going to get that other year of experience? He going to come out of high school as a supervisor somewhere. I would not be surprised. <laughs> Just the opportunities that we we have here, you know, Dr. Donaldson report, again, I know I brought up the two things that we missed, but I tell you what, I already know the staff was already working on those two issues. <laughs> so we, we laughing about it, but just another outstanding job. And I just so happy to be a small part of the success and the drive that this city and system has. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cummings. You know what, sorry, one more thing, <laughs> sorry. You know, I tell you what, I wouldn't mind, I saw Ms. Burrell here from Horizon, and um, you know, at the start of the COVID, she was supposed to receive some kind of like big time award of some accomplishments that she had, I think as a gifted teacher. And it was at the very beginning of COVID when COVID first started. And I wouldn't be surprised if we made a list of all the teachers that had received awards and accolades that was kind of, kind of covered up because mm -hmm. of the COVID situation. If we were to make a list on something like that, I wouldn't be surprised if we have over 50 teachers that have had accomplishments and awards during that, that time. And hopefully maybe we can come back and just say, hey man, we, we, we see you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, your board has been, uh, has been busy since the, the last meeting. Um, this is a very high-performing board. Uh, the entire board signed up for a board officer training down at ASB in, in Montgomery. They were uh, very excited to have us down there. Uh, they, they see this board as, as one, of the, uh, one of the examples of how it should work in the state. Uh, and and uh, from everything from, from the selection, from, from how the city council, uh, uh, how we go through an appointment process, how we don't represent any districts, uh, we're, we're a volunteer board. Um, you know, they, they, they just they hold us up as, as a model for the rest of the state. And, uh, and I was just, just happy to be down there with my fellow board members. Uh, the board was also invited recently to the uh, en Enrichment Center uh, end of the year kind of counselor showcase. And that was, that was very eye-opening. Uh, the, the Enrichment Center provides uh, counselors at every one of our schools. Mm -hmm. And they just they they pour their heart into these kids, and uh, it's uh, it's it's really I mean uh, being in, being an educator is a calling. Certainly, being a counselor to these uh, uh, to our kids here in this district mm -hmm. is a calling, and and uh, just hats off to what the uh, enrichment center does for this district and for our partnership with them. And uh, I think that's a that's a very worth worthwhile uh, worthwhile partnership to make sure that we we maintain. Uh, the board was also uh, in attendance at the State of the Schools event, where uh, where we had our our very own uh, li uh, Liberties uh, Miss Jones uh, presented on the NBCTs, <laughs> uh, the the impact that those make, and and wow, I mean she really she really she really issued a challenge to the teachers. It was it was it was very it was powerful uh, for how how basically she said it, you know the NBCT process opens your eyes to to your weaknesses and and can turn your weaknesses into strengths uh also uh, dr nichols uh, uh held court there and the, on the uh, on the stage <laughs> and uh and was a, a a great example of of uh what this what this district uh does for its students and and uh and in this outreach the state of schools event is really an outreach to the business community to uh, to really form more partnerships in these types of programs that we've we've highlighted tonight, uh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that that uh, speaking of Dr. Nichols, that he's going to celebrate a birthday, and so uh, so uh, happy birthday to you, Dr. Nichols. Uh, if anybody was was uh, uh, 
skilled enough to sing you happy birthday, it'd be you. So, <laughs> so Ms. I, Ms. King sang it to me earlier. <laughs> so that, she did a great job. Well, I'm glad, and I'll I'll, I'll say uh, that that covers the board then. <laughs> so happy birthday, Dr. Nichols. Thank you much. At this time, we are going to. Uh, oh well. Uh, we do have a finance committee meeting. Our next regularly scheduled meeting is May 3rd. We have a finance committee meeting that day. And then at 5 p.m. in the board boardroom, we have our uh, next school board meeting. That will be uh, that will also be the annual meeting of the school board that's required by state law uh, that that day. Uh, at this time, we need to enter into an executive session to discuss uh, pending or imminently likely litigation. Uh, we will re adjourn uh, we will re, uh, rejoin after the executive session and uh, call for a vote is that correct mr Anderson? and then this is uh, the subject matter of the executive session is to discuss the, uh, the uh, pending or imminently likely litigation uh, i can clarify that if you're counsel so thank, you. thank you sir so now i need a motion a second to move and a vote to move into executive session correct mr Holcomb, one yes, thing sir. it says 11. I think the finance committee meeting is at four. Is that right? Okay, just want to make sure. Laverne was melting down over here. She thought she was going to have on 11 o'clock. So I, I thought she, she was bringing lunch. I, well, she, she might. I don't know. But I just want to make sure we got that right. And, you know, she and Jenna, I'm, I'm not sure. That she, she had a shocked look on her face. So, so with, with that, I'll, uh, can I have a motion and a second to move into executive session? So move. Second. A motion by Mr. Frere and a second by Mr. Holsey. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstained? We're going to take a five-minute break and enter into executive session. Thank you for tuning.